In our recent best or favorite car episode, both Holger and Brian from our team picked the Peugeot 208 in this all new generation as one of their favorite cars as for price performance. Well, then I got interested and said, I want to drive it myself and see how it performs. Here, of course, in Thomas Blue, well, they didn't want to pay the licensing fees to me, so they called it Vertigo Blue. However, full review, Peugeot 208 in this new generation, today as a GT line and petrol version, and everything in exterior, interior, and the driving experience here on Autogefühl in full HD, full screen, full length. Let's go! So here in the front of the new generation, we can see this huge front grille, this horizontal dot structure, so to say, really beautiful. The logo is inbound right there. And in the GT trim, got black accentuations, stronger bumpers in the lower side, also some sporty features all around the vehicle. So GT and GT line will have those sportier features. The electric version is also available as a GT, by the way, and it does not look so much different from the petrol versions. Here they also all have those vertical daytime running lights, you know, as those Peugeot you know, claws. Very interesting and I think a nice modern styling. The headlamp unit also comes with LED, either optional or standard here in the GT line or the GT trim. The length is at 4 meters 02, 13 foot 2 or 158 inches. So it's 5 centimeters longer than before and 4 centimeters flatter actually. There's also especially a longer hood that makes the car appear sportier. Then those black accentuations here around the wheel arches, they're quite massive. Some like it, some don't. What about you? GT line here also with contrasting mirror caps right here and we have in this case 16 inch wheels but you can also get 17 inch wheels with summer tires here with the gt and the gt line but overall a quite sport look and wow what a beautiful blue color this vertigo blue again what we call thomas blue here on auto Gefühl because that's my favorite color code gt line badge right there and i think they really found a nice modern styling with this vehicle or what do you think and also quite a seamless design here at the rear with this element that goes all the way around the vehicle. Then the modern tail lamps are also included right there. GT line with the black accentuations in the lower part and also honest exhaust, two exhaust pipes here for this turbo petrol engine. They're using the so-called new CMP platform, 30 kilograms less than the platform or the or chassis before, also less vibrations and so on, better noise insulation, more assistance systems as possible, and also a stiffer ride than overall. Let's see if that's true later on in the driving part. Engines, aside from a diesel, 1.5 liter four cylinder, one and horsepower manual gearbox. Here the main engines, the three cylinder, 1.2 liter petrol engines, either manual and naturally aspirated engine, 75 horsepower or then with a turbo 100 horsepower optional 8-speed auto gearbox or this one here today 130 horsepower and always combined with the 8-speed automatic gearbox and then there's also 136 horsepower electric drive with the 50 kilowatt hour battery we also tested that one in our other review you can see in the video description or linked comment That's the khaki right here. It's pretty thick actually, but you know, fits quite good. So, and here we go, door closing sound first. That's quite solid, like that. However, some saving of materials here. This is all hard pack here as well, but this is a nice styling because this has this carbon fiber style, so to say. And then we have some Leatherette features right here at the inside of the door. Very slim door pocket. 
And then rather futuristic Peugeot i cockpit, optional digital instruments, zoom more deals to that, and come with analog base and interesting handle here, so to say. This <laughs> design, not sure what they thought about that. It should be like an airy design or something. Then again, this carbon fiber structure right there. It's not real carbon fiber, just a look. Then you have um, black base fabric seats in this vehicle, but you can also opt for those sportier seats. And this is then a mix of a nice gray fabric here and some leather red accentuations here and also at the outside. So also all animal free, that's cool. And it looks quite fancy as well. And again, this very small computer game like steering wheel with the flat bottom which has pros and cons, this whole cockpit atmosphere. We'll soon talk more about that. We have those pedals here for the automatic gearbox here behind the steering wheel, turning indicator, and this one then is for the cruise control. So when I get inside, it's actually standard as for a small segment vehicle. And well, driving position here in the sport is actually quite decent. It is somewhat falling backwards a little bit. And the thing is, and they're almost the same I felt in the 2008 because a lot of things are similar, same platform, same seats, you just sit a little bit more upright and so on. But the thing is, you feel really cramped in in this vehicle as a tall person. When you're small, no problem, probably a perfect car for you. But when you're a little bit taller, here 1 meets 86 or 6 with 1, and I put the seat all the way down, it's no problem headroom wise. That's not a problem, you know. Um, so it's a little bit more comfortable when you put the seat up because it also gets straighter then. But you feel somewhat cramped in in this cockpit. And also here with the steering wheel, I cannot set it more down because then it would hit my knees. But when I set it higher, then I can't see so much of the instruments. So that's the thing here about this cockpit layout. We really didn't think about tall people. However, um, you know, when about like getting back pain and so on, it's not as fast to get the back pain as you might think. So that's then again from a driving experience a little bit better than, you know, even as expected. But the whole, you know, view you have is quite futuristic. Also menu handle then of the back part of the seat here with the, um, you know, like a, just a turning knob and on that here just all manual. And I'll leave it in this position also when we take a look at the rear perspective. But what's always cool, again, this handling of that steering wheel, so much fun. Interior overview, as I said, quite futuristic, and you already hear it, maybe in a microphone. Here, even the first ventilation strength is quite noticeable, and the more you put it, of course, the louder it gets, so overall a loud effect. And that's also how you control then the AC overall, AC on and off here, for example. Pretty complicated to do it in the screen, it's set out for users that just leave it on automatic. Then again, either analog instruments or this 10 inch screen here for the digital instruments. And on this side here, you can get five inch, seven inch, or this one here, also the optional 10 inch screen. We had said that they just don't put this one or, you know, this one just as standard. Then nice contrast stitching here on the uh, dashboard and then again this carbon fiber style below that. Then you have a control unit here in the lower part, for example hotkey for the um, ventilation or then also to the GPS. Soon more details to that screen here by the way. And then below that some keys you can actually press for example for AC off and so on and a very complicated way, for example, to activate the seat heating. Stylish, but complicated. There's one knob here still for the volume. Then again, this very small steering wheel, and you can see again this compromise between putting it higher and not seeing anything there, or then putting it down to my knees. You can also put it inward and outward, at least some adjustment possible. Left side to adjust the volume and also the digital instruments right side, picking up the phone or scrolling through radio list and so on for the right side infotainment screen. Then in the lower console, you can hide everything here. USB-C on the left, normal USB on the right. And then when you put in your phone, you should do it here on the right side, at least for the Apple CarPlay. The Apple CarPlay connection only works with the USB-A or not with the USB-C. And further down below, some more cubby hole. 8-speed automatic gearbox, an option or include here in this 130 horsepower version. Looks quite stylish as well. Then we have a driving mode selector next to non-adaptive cup holders. And this arm rest, which has a nice leather red cover, soft, and when you put it up, some more space below.
And here you can also switch something of the views, have the digital speed, but you can also have more um, you know, assistant systems information in here, for example. And like this second layer they put here for the 3D cockpit, it's hard to catch it on camera. Better actually um, with your own eyes. Here also for GPS, that's also possible. But here, here's how they do it. They have a second screen on top and that is then mirrored, so to say, in this plexiglass layer. Pretty clever. Details to the screen, that's how it looks like when you put the Apple CarPlay, so it doesn't go all the way over the screen. And the sound system here is actually quite nice. So for the, such a small vehicle, it's really very nice, gives a good clear surround sound. Then let's go back and usually you can have like this, you know, there's a brand logo here, but that's not the case here, so you have to uh, go either back here or it's a little bit strange use the lower hotkeys and then you can for example also access the GPS which could be a little bit better it's not that responsive and not so well to use I would rather use the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto Maps, uh, Android Auto Maps then um, there's also a hotkey to go back right here so and there's no real main menu so nothing to show you right there just again this GPS unit which is kind of complicated to control again while driving so Use the Apple CarPlay Android Auto and can be happy with that. So a lot of things in this interior are pretty cool, but what's not cool is this rear view camera, not the best resolution, and then this uh, fake drone view from above. They just have a front and a rear camera, so they cannot generate a live feed from the side of the car. So they just, so to say, fake a feed of the car from the sides. So it only generates while you're driving backwards or forwards and um, I think that's not that helpful actually. How to make things a little bit more premium in an easy way? Well, put this back mirror and make it frameless and that looks quite fancy then. Well, a little bit more wheelbase than before in the previous generation so that should improve the legroom and well it does but still I mean um, yeah I can't really fit in here properly I have to like stretch my legs here a little bit so especially because those seats are very thick that might be a little bit better with those base fabric seats and you might have more leg room and you see also when you put the seat a little bit higher then it would also fit a little better with my knees so yes tell the front drivers put the seat a little bit higher that you can fill in those molds here um, again won't be a problem when you're smaller but again for tall, four tall adults it's not really the proper vehicle headroom wise however is no problem still got some space left here and I mean then, if my legs wouldn't be that long, then it's actually also a quite cozy and good seating position here in the rear. Other than that, we have Isofix at the outside parts. We do flip the seats already from here. We also have the nice mix of fabric right here. Stays cool in summer and warm in winter. Perfect. And then the visual part for the LED red on the outside. And in the middle part, we have two more USB chargers. 265 liters as for the trunk and to get this figure they did not put in like another um, cover right here so there's an a step turn to the seats so in length here it's about 66 centimeters you see here that would be the normal one i already flipped this one and the length here to the front seat overall is uh, yeah just about one meters and 40 and the width here is about a meter here in the side you know, side part, you can store some, you know, loose stuff and so on. And when I put a backpack here inside, see it already is okay right there because up to the cover here, it's actually, you know, like about 46 centimeters. And that's actually quite decent also overall for a vehicle. So you can get along, of course, not the biggest space. It's also about this segment here, of course. Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge with the Peugeot 208. In Germany we always say 208, like 208. But yeah, just however you want to call it. And we started a little bit with city driving here, which you know is the most suitable thing for this vehicle. Then we also head out to the motorway and some countryside roads. And I can already tell you here in the city and being in traffic and so on, you feel really cozy having this small vehicle and it's so easy to steer and ease it around here with this tiny steering wheel and it's really you know good in its responsiveness 
it feels a little bit in a computer game, like arcade-like. So let's say it's not the most natural input, but it's still direct and it's a lot of fun, actually. Again, it feels like a toy car a little bit. And I think that's a good thing in this case because it brings actually joy to your driving life, you know. Of course, they have worked on the noise insulation. We will also experience more of that on the motorway very soon. However, noise-wise, what I do realize is that even when I have the ventilation set to the lowest level, like level one ventilation, it's actually quite loud already. So you usually I set it to like level one with most vehicles when I don't need any special cooling or heating function, and then I hear nothing, you know? Um, and whoa, what are they doing here? Nice. So someone crisscrossing from left to right all the way. So I usually have set on level one that I don't hear anything, but here you even hear it in level one, at least when you're driving a little bit slower. So overview is also actually quite decent and you know normally good for a small segment vehicle. Suspension wise, they have a you know just one fits it all suspension. They do somehow adapt it for the electric vehicles. It's the same with the 2008, where they also have you know some adaptations because of the higher weight for the electric vehicles for the battery. It's the same case here when you pick the E2 208 or 208. And other than that, I mean, it's actually a good compromise. It's not the most comfortable uh, suspension in the segment, but it's also you know by far not the worst. It's actually quite decent and. It is really fun to slalom this car around because of this steering wheel and it feels quite sporty and you know you can always hold on <laughs> to this handle here I told you earlier here with the yeah this very funny design here um, in the front also good looking at 3d cockpit it gives me a quite decent speed and I this car always reminds me to sit upright also in the car um, because yeah again that's the problem with when you're tall then especially with the legs you have to put the steering wheel up but then when you put the steering wheel up you can hardly see something of the cockpit and no matter how I set it either I squeeze the steering wheel with my knees here or I cannot see properly to the cockpit so yeah there is no good compromise for me here and indeed also when you drive this car a little bit longer you feel it's really you know it's a really cool car but it's not you know the favorite small segment vehicle for tallest persons so you have to be aware of that so if you are taller than 180 or taller than six foot you should take a test ride first and see if it really suits you and i mean i fit in here and you know with those sporty seats they also do quite well already but um i already felt better in the 2008 because that one with more upright seating position crossover like is a little more suitable for taller people than with a normal small car segment seating position as we do have here so so far it's also quite silent as for you know tire wind noise and so on and we'll also experience a little bit higher speed very soon i mean suspension again when we're going over some bumps here now that could be a little bit more comfortable definitely but then again they also try to keep the price low I'm thinking about 50k euros is 15 50 15 k so 15,000 euros is the entry price if you pick a turbo petrol engine like here in the gt line 130 horsepower then you go and can go with all the access to about 28k 30k is then the entry price for the electric one and electric in gt highest trim is 38 so that's then the whole span of this model and um still i mean quite nice price performance wise especially when you don't go for too much extras here we also have um you know, decent sound system in build and it's actually quite cool when listening to music showed you that earlier so the best thing for me here is that you do have a nice and sporty ride and you feel somewhat special because of this unique interior whoa that was like a, a rough bang there at the um, rear axle so yeah the more I drive it the more comfortable I would like it to have as for suspension um, yeah I mean very interesting turning indicator sounds yeah you know like sounds a little bit old school doesn't really resonate the rest of this futuristic interior uh, i have here and also you know 
It's quite interesting how they formed everything here. This is all hard pack, yes. Um, also makes strange noise when you really hammer it, but you know, who does that? Aside from car reviews. <laughs> but then again, the look and feel is actually, especially the look, you know, the look is actually quite cool as well when you sit in the vehicle. So to me, really a special thing is looking at the, you know, the futuristic setup and then also always thinking like, ah, oh, you know, I can go around this corner, sneak here in right there. That's really so much fun with this car, especially with this unique steering wheel. As for the fuel economy, mm, yeah, I mean, we've been riding downhill here quite a lot now. Now we'll go up again uh, with some acceleration that I'll also give you like the life number here. We did some extensive like motorway cruise control tests earlier and we could let up with about seven liters and one kilometers. That's about 34 mpg US, um, yeah, something 40 mpg UK. Um, should be still a little bit lower for a small vehicle. So can't expect too much here from this petrol three-cylinder turbo. Might be better with the natural aspirated engine. Then again, this one won't have so much power. And talking about power, when we do a test now, um, like 60 kilometers an hour to 100, let's go. Well, that's it. And you see, especially with the 130 horsepower version, you get along very well. You can also save some money and go for the little bit less horsepower version then and still have the turbo as Brian recommended, for example. You always have to keep like this price performance ratio in check. Blind spot monitor here, you can see this, um, it's not a triangle as we usually have. It's like just a red ring or red rings. Um, we know that the PSA group and also the Opel, they go for this very late approach of the blind spot monitor some do prefer that some others like me including um, i rather prefer the early approach because here again when the car is coming nothing 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 and now just like in the very moment it is in the blind spot and so people can argue actually that you say you know that's good because then i just know when the car is in the blind spot yeah you can follow this but the other argument is usually you start your approach already, you know, when someone is coming from behind. And so you need the warning a little bit earlier in advance. That's what I really, you know, rather prefer definitely. So here in the motorway, I think noise insulation is still good and it's also better than the 2008, I have the feeling. That's also, you know, the car sits a little bit lower. Also no wonder than in, in this case. Um, there's still this separate stock column here for the cruise control, by the way. Um, however, here, you know, again, have the problem with seeing something that's done in the instruments. Um, so yeah, there it is. Also blinded now, so you can set the cruise control here on the left column. Get off here and give you some agile drive in the roundabout. Yeah, it really feels cool and sporty. That's one of the main things. Also has this lane keeping assist that is actively keeping you in the lane, actually. So now in this roundabout, there's no one coming right there. Give it a little bit more power. Very neutrally and balanced, really fun here. And now other side again, little tire squeaking, pushing the car, a little bit wet also on the road. That's really a lot of fun to do with this vehicle. So that's really, really cool. Yeah, one of the most fun vehicles, definitely. That's also something, oh, I actually want to get on here again to the motorway, but I'm not allowed to do that today. So we have to go around here. So now we drive a little bit slower and I can, I guess, test it out. It's like, so the cruise control here, I can set a limiter or the cruise control. Yeah, 30 is the minimum limit, so there's no speed less than 30 kilometers an hour. So here we go. And there we can pause it as well. So it's really interesting to take a look at the 3D cockpit. It's a quite nice innovation actually, and especially if you can could look at it a little bit better <laughs> when you're a little bit smaller. And you can also change the views there as I um, told you earlier. So that's um, for example for the, for the driving aids and so on. So here you can see the distance to the cars is being kept. It's an adaptive cruise control we have in here as an option. And so far it's working quite well. 
So this um, lane keeping assist rather something for the motorway, definitely. But that's also one thing, so they massively upgraded all of the assistance systems here in this vehicle. That's also one big advantage of this new generation. Brakes are also very well to control and you know have a fine and good feeling um, over those. So no different driving characteristics, um, most of the stuff is really well done. Also have a stop sign indicator here for example now, so um, this case it was actually a traffic light but you know those stop signs have a traffic light why do they do that, do that in germany because when the traffic light at some point either fails or will be like shut off at night or something then those signs count otherwise always the traffic light counts of course now again setting the cruise control see how the distance is being kept and actually i mean we can try if the um if the lane keeping assist already works already here sometimes the you know the car reads the lines on the left and the right and it depends so on the right side here countryside roads sometimes it dissolves a little bit into the screen at the side and that can um, you know lead to that's not being recognized for example so it's always hard to say if the car really realizes that but so far I think you're really having a nice ride and now the overall fuel economy was driving down the hill but then a little bit acceleration I could actually now bring it to about six point something liters so that's a little bit better than scored early especially with the small vehicles it really depends on you know how and where you drive them this, those small engines they can be quite efficient when you redrive slowly but then they really exceed the given figures when you really hammer them so that's also why they do this downsizing because on paper they always score better but then in real life real driving conditions when you also sometimes hammer them then fuel economy really goes up as for controlling the climate functions here while driving that's really not recommended to do that so this is a vehicle where you have to kind of accept it to set it 22 degrees celsius or like you know 72 73 74 fahrenheit and just leave it then or set it on the auto mode and that's it some are happy with that and say like why wouldn't i do otherwise others again say you know i like to switch ac on ac off from time to time more vent strength less coming from there coming from here warmer colder i'm more a temperature switching guy you know no no i don't want to make the car dirty so guys behind me one will why isn't this guy driving through the um, through the, the rain pothole there? It's like, oh, we maybe want to do some shots, some beauty shots. <laughs> yeah, sorry, can't explain it to you guys. Ford Transit behind us. Reason had the Ford Transit review, by the way. So if you're also interested in some light commercial vehicles, also tune into that. You know, you can always find some nice reviews just using the YouTube search, like how to fuel Ford Transit, and then you'll all find that. Again, a silent and cozy ride if you like it, but then again, as soon as you move a little bit on the steering wheel, we have this you know, rather sporty ride. Then about the automatic gearbox, quite happy with that, 8-speed automatic gearbox, converter gearbox, and it's doing a great job, so um, no matter if slow or faster, such a pleasure, 8-speed, and that's also the way to go. You know, we recently had in the Range Rover Evoque, the 9-speed automatic gearbox which is coming also from ZF should be good but it's not so this 8-speed automatic gearbox we have here this is really you know very well done and it is of course a significant extra price in this segment so a small vehicle easily gets more expensive when you pick stuff like that and again if you are in traffic situations and just always you know you can keep both hands in the uh, steering wheel all the time it's such a relief not um, you know not having to shift it can be really fun in a like roadster or something yes it can also be fun in a small car and it also saves money but if you want to invest the money in a little bit more comfort then this one could be a cool thing because the suspension you cannot upgrade can't get more comfort from that so you can at least get some more comfort as for the transmission and I definitely like that so 
we also have those shifting pedals right here so you can always shift back if you like you want to do a little bit more you know responsiveness from the engine or hold the rise pedal to go back then to the normal d driving mode you can also set this m mode with the um, shifting lever here then they really sticks to the gears for example if you're rolling down the hill for a longer time like from a you know mountain pass or something using more engine brake that could also be something you can also you know switch that back driving modes here which are also present in normal then you can also go to the eco driving mode and the throttle input is being reduced actually so not sure if that's really very useful you can also fine-tune it yourself of course and then there is this sport mode there the throttle input is just when I stay on the throttle the same way I do now and switch to the sport mode immediately gets a little bit more throttle that's very interesting so and it also change something from the steering characteristic yeah in a normal mode the steering is a little bit lighter in the sports mode I get a little bit more feedback from the steering. well it's not I wouldn't say it's feedback just a little bit harder to steer and that can be more suitable for you maybe um, maybe it's a little bit more fun to drive than in the sports mode but especially with the automatic gearbox the shifting is changed so in the sports mode the RPMs are turned up just a little bit higher in normal mode and especially in eco mode there's early shifting then for better fuel efficiency so you can also play around with that just a little bit you have to reach it here while driving it's a little bit like t-rex like especially if you have long arms <laughs> to type on, on on this one but i mean not sure if you would change it that often in this vehicle then so overall what can we say let's check again the fuel economy we just now at again there are six liters and one kilometers i think we can live with that so that's a little bit better than with the motorway riding. So that's then six liters um, or yeah, that's then almost 40 MPG US and more than 40 MPG UK. Then a fun drive, especially now with this unique cockpit setup. Suspension could be a little bit more comfortable, more forgiving when you're driving over some humps and so on. Noise installation upgraded here in the new generation better as for the assistance systems that's also very well done seating comfort for tall people and also you know this whole layout again not the best for tall people that's one thing you have to live with and also the infotainment system control definitely use the Apple CarPlay Android Auto and sorry 22 degrees Celsius AC automatic it is otherwise you will get very dangerous if you try to change something than there while driving so again the pros and cons about this vehicle here in our driving part hope you really enjoyed it here together with me and we have actually two nice more countryside corners which you can also enjoy together with me here in the in the sunshine and with those impressions we leave the driving part and head on over to our very final conclusion for today And now to the conclusion for today with the all-new Peugeot 208. Well, from the exterior, a real beauty, especially in this color, of course. Interesting with this daytime running light and this dot structure grille. So I think they have done a quite good job right here. Also, the interior styling is really futuristic, really cool, up-to-date. Yeah, with this Peugeot i-Cockpit, it does have a lot of advantages. However, for tall people, it's really hard to find a balance between not, you know, getting close to your knees and still being able to see everything in the cockpit very well. And also the seating position could be better for tall people. So if you're a little bit taller or as tall as me, then probably the 2008 in the SUV styling would be a little bit better, a little bit more suitable for taller people. We did find some things in the interior that could be upgraded, maybe like hard pack materials and so on. And yeah, controlling the AC unit, that's also something to talk about. Driving wise, really cool, nice balance. Fuel economy, let's say, okay, could be a little bit better. The electric version will deliver the best customer experience when you have the chance to re recharge it actually properly at home or at work. Brian also told that when he was driving the electric version, 
Other than that, petrol is still way to go. You don't really need a diesel for this small vehicle. And especially in this version here with about 8.7 seconds is the acceleration into one kilometers an hour. Yeah, it's slower than the electric, which would be 8.1 seconds, but still very decently powered. I think you can also get along with the 100 horsepower version of this very engine. Driving-wise, it was a lot of fun, especially then with the small steering wheel and so on. So really computer game-like, really cool. Offering of space, also quite decent, a little bit better than in the predecessor. And overall, I think, yeah, it is indeed a good price-performance ratio and can really, um, you know, understand why Holger and Brian picked that one here as one of their favorite from the recent vehicles. However, I told you also pricing-wise, 15,000 base, then this one here, as it stands here right now, with all the extras, almost 28. That's already quite expensive then. So maybe we should get rid of some of the extras. Automatic gearbox is very, very well done. So very good automatic gearbox. And with the you know, you know, manual gearbox, Brian was not too happy with that. So automatic gearbox would be our tip if you want to afford that here also for this segment. And then also electric version would be a little bit more expensive. But then again, if you get governmental benefits, it could still pay off. Looking for more information on the other versions, tune into the other review with Brian and also see you there or maybe at one of our next episodes, for example, with one of the competitors of this vehicle. Thank you so much for tuning in today. See you next time.